the starving artist or starving spiritual person is a real, really real thing. Very real. (laughs) And and it's really fun for me to now be witnessing the amount of, um, I'm going to say mostly women that are super spiritual, but they haven't been able to put the other aspects in place, like the masculine energy, the structure around their their, um, gifts to be able to monetize them and get it out into the world. And I'm flipping completely. I'm like, oh, I want to know what your world is all about. Teach me your spiritual path. Yeah. And uh, and that I can see how grateful I am that I've taken the journey from in the masculine because um, learning about those structures has, as you said, afforded me so much time freedom and thought freedom um, that I get to do these things without any pressure now. Mm. So that piece is so vital and I will say that myself right now, I'm so swung on the pendulum of on the feminine side that it's really, I can see the difficulties of women that are so much in their feminine energy, people, I, how difficult it is to come back into balance because I'm not even there yet. I'm not at all in a space where I'm like ready to go back into the, ma- the, the structure. Yeah. Um, so I now, f- I can sympathize with people that are in that very feminine flow of understanding of needing to transition over, uh, man, like definitely, I think the biggest thing that help would help in that space is to have a routine for first and foremost, and I start bringing structure back into your day and also education, like doing actual courses and actually having, I'm, I'm just thinking of myself, what would, what would help me to, to, to get my butt into gear right now? It would have to show up somewhere at a certain point in time to actually learn the skills that I need to yeah. and have someone that's accountable for helping me to get my gifts out into the world and actually monetize them. Yeah. Um, and then the, I would say also working on the worth, worth being worthy of receiving as well um, and seeing your gift as profound. And to give a backstory as well, if people are like, oh, but my gift isn't worth as much. Like I made my first million of selling selfies. So <laughs> give a little bit more context for that because that's it's so fascinating. And it's I love really that you just co- say that. Uh, well, I feel because no one no one knew at the time what I was doing and they all just thought I was a stupid little kid that was doing what I, what I made into um, the self-portraits, but I call them advanced selfies because I found it funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and everybody was like, oh, cute. <laughs> so I look at her doing her self-portraits, like, oh, my God, adorable. And then now it's like, oh, you did what with that? How much did you monetize that? You bought how many houses from selfies? <laughs> 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 and it's really fun. And I share that story because I believe that anything can be monetized. Yeah. Uh, anything. The way mm. you position it is everything. Yeah. And being able to talk to people about like what it actually means to for me it's like getting the a really good photograph of yourself not only is nice for you know your ego but also you can do it in the comfort of your own home when no one's judging you because Mm. judgment in front of others to try to look good is something that I've had to deal with of like oh I'm trying too hard right now so I can't I can't like do that but if it's just me and the camera I can express myself in whatever way way I want Mm. and by having a being able to see myself in a better light through capturing my my essence, the way that I think I look on camera um, has given me the confidence in life to also pursue so much more, to, to show up in the world with so much more confidence and dress better even in real life, like explore myself. It's just a, a tool of exploration, really, mm-hmm. self-portraits. So the way that you position anything that you have, it just has to be, you really have to dig into what it is that you are offering on a very practical level as well. So bring in the, the, you know, spiritual aspect of it, but then also bring practical results that people can get from whatever you're doing. Yeah. So I think that's, that's um, it is an important piece. And the world needs what you have. Like there's a reason why you are doing what you do and the, the world really desperately needs it. You just need to find an angle that's unique. Yeah. Like self-portraiture, I didn't freaking invent it. Mm-hmm. I just took a spin on it and made it desirable and kind of hilarious. (laughs) (laughs) And so I love, I love it. I love the story in the context of just how you can truly turn anything into a business. And that's very refreshing for what, whatever, whoever's listening to this right now. And if you, you feel like you have a gift for public speaking or basket weaving or, uh, self portrait photography, um, or guitar teaching guitar, 
literally anything, creating the right frame and funnel for people to receive your offering in a way that you can be supported and monetized, I think is also, and I know we've had this conversation, it's an amazing um, gift you've been able to create in your life. And I think that you'd be an amazing guide for supporting other people in this process, whether it's a course you create or something like helping people do this because it's needed. And the starving artist is very real. And I could have started this podcast two years ago. Like I had the desire for sharing myself more in this way and I didn't just put it off, but I really wanted to focus on on building my business, Meraki Media, which is the production company first and have that be the financial power horse horse of what I'm doing. Um, That way I can step into this, which feels like my form of art and like my passion and it not be dependent on financial resources Mm -hmm. for its success. Because a lot of people, whether it's their music or the photography or whatever, it's like their passion and it gets, you know, they're dependent on that for their own living, Mm -hmm. which is great if it works. But if for years and years go on and you're struggling, it's like it sucks the juice and the joy from it. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And what you're doing with these things that are going to like, it's, sometimes it might not feel full integrity. Like I love taking self portraits and like there's aspects of things that I don't want to do because it feels like I'm, you know, it's like, oh, really? Do I have to build a landing page? Like, do I have to do these things? Do I have to create a course right now? Like, it's a bit like, eh, I'd yeah. rather be out gallivanting in the woods naked, you know, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> standard. <laughs> However, um, all you're doing is buying time for you to create your art. And so, as you said, this is your art piece. Mm-hmm. So my art piece, I have all these art projects that I'm starting to want to create. I want to have my art that I don't don't even have the art yet, but I have an idea. I want to have it in galleries. It's like, cool. That's not going to, I know that it's not going to pay me though. Yeah. Like selling art in a gallery to me, it's not a way to monetize that well, unless you're a really big artist or, you know, me making music now because it's a childhood dream. I know it's not going to make me money. You don't know that. Well, I, I'm not at all counting on, like, I don't, I don't need it to make yeah, me money. Yeah. But it could blow up. And like, <laughs> I, I wasn't planning on this podcast making me money. And I'm sure six months from now, it'll probably be making me a lot of money. But like, <laughs> it's not the reason I'm doing it. And you stepping into music, it's the same thing, which is, which is great. Yeah. It's just buying you time. So now I've done all these other things that a lot of people, I remember starting to talk about finances and I had people unsubscribing and being really triggered because they were like, oh, you're only in it for the money that this is so like, it's. Don't talk about this. And they were so triggered by just the thought of talking about finances Mm. that they were unsubscribing from me after Mm. being with me for years. And I was like, now I understand that it's not a reflection of me. It's a reflection of them and how taboo this topic of finances is. But it's not. Money is, oh my gosh, money is so beautiful. And one thing that I've had is I've had a really beautiful, I think, relationship with finances and money because I just see it as energy. Yeah. That's all it is. It's It just wants to be nurtured. Money wants to be someone's, it wants to have a best friend. Yeah. And the amount of people that treat money like trash and they talk about it with such little respect or get they get rid of it. The minute they have it, they rid of it. And it's like, imagine like I was your friend and you are always like talking down on me or... And, and talking about how shit I am and how annoying I am and also trying to get rid of me all the time, what would you do? Eventually, you'd leave. You mm. wouldn't want to be in that presence. Yeah. But if someone's like so respectful and loving and not obsessed, because that's also a really clingy relationship dynamic, but if someone's like, wow, hi, and they nurture you and they make you feel special and loved and you really see the energy of money as something just beautiful, money loves that. Yeah. And mm. it wants to be in that presence. So if you have gratitude for what you have and respect it and treat it with dignity and you don't spend it on things that are not important to you and they're not fulfilling and they don't uplift you in some way and they don't rise your vibrations, like it's going to find a different home. Yeah. Simple. Mm. Yeah, I love it. I think that's so powerful. It's just like we have so much inherent programming around money that is so unconscious. Like for people that are listening to this right now, if I was to say money is the root of all joy. Joy, but most people, it's money is the root of all evil. Money doesn't grow on trees. Rich people go to hell. That might sound a little stark. I don't know how common that one is. <laughs> no, eat the eat the rich. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. That's it. That, that's that's the thing. That's that's that. Just I just want to. Money literally does grow on trees, which is the funny thing, you know. Oh, it does. It does. <laughs> literally, oh it's paper. So it's well, Australia, it's plastic. So oh, uh, really? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but it's Mother Nature still. Everything yeah. comes from Mother Nature. 
Mm. Um, yeah, that, that programming is really, really detrimental because I think I actually think that programming has been made in order to keep people very small. Because when someone has money, of course, it amplifies who you are and it can make you a horrible pe- being if you are a horrible being. Yeah. Um, however, the right people that have money in their hands is what the world needs right now. Yeah.